I know I've been on a Divorce Diaries rant for quite a while now, but I just want to take a break to just remind you about this podcast and how I record it. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast everywhere. Seriously. On Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Again, that's anchor.fm to get started or download the Anchor app. You are now listening to the Divorce Diaries podcast with your host, well, that's a secret. No names, ages, or any other identifying characteristics will be used as we protect the young and innocent. You'll be taken on a journey as one man considers getting a divorce or remaining married. The Divorce Diaries daily entries chronicle the decision-making processes in real time as they unfold day by day. He hopes to add a bit of clarity to his sometimes muddled mess of a marriage. Cheating, overspending, sex, sadness and betrayal are the characteristics of this marriage. Is he making the right choice? Welcome to The Divorce Diaries. Entire seasons are released on Patreon weeks before anywhere else. At Divorce Diary Podcast Patreon page. Link below in description. Now for today's episode. Welcome to The Rebooted Divorce Diaries Podcast where I'm recording everything with a brain. With my emotions checked. And I've finally come to understand and realize that I was way more angry, way more bitter, and therefore way more childish and kind of sort of throwing temper tantrums the whole time I was recording Divorce Diaries 1.0. We'll call it The Anger Issues. I don't know. Uh, It's just me making a little joke about it, trying to make it a little bit light because the situation is just so damn heavy. Anyway, this rebooted Divorce Diaries podcast is going to focus primarily on something that was said to me very recently that helped things fall into place for me. By my wife, she said something to me. Now, before I get into the diary entry, I want to talk about me and my flaws because that is what this Divorce Diaries podcast is now about and what it should have been about the entire time. Me and my shortcomings, um, maybe as a father, definitely as a husband and as a person overall. I flat out don't listen. It's it. This isn't this isn't hyperbole. This isn't me exaggerating for any shock value or anything like that. I will literally be told something like. Hey, I just folded all of your clothes. We'll go with that because I I can't think of anything. I just folded all your clothes and I'm like, okay, do you want to have dinner? And I'll just start talking about that because there was something else that was maybe already on my mind and I wasn't able to switch gears and come out of that. And I said something. I said something else. I said something totally unrelated or whatever. Now, the funny part about everything with me is now since I've had this perspective and paradigm shift and I'm primarily focusing on myself I just have said why the fuck don't I listen now my wife has said many things over the years to me as it relates to how she feels about me as her husband how she feels about me as her friend or as her whatever I, that I, the fact that I don't listen to her and I just never wanted to listen or accept things that I predetermined as false. I was arrogant. I was cocky. I was, oh my gosh, just, I was a mansplainer. I didn't listen. And now that I am listening, I, not only am I listening, but I'm listening. I'm understanding I am seeing everything for what it is. And I'm not letting any circumstance prevent me from 
paying attention. And here's what my wife said. She said that I'm, um, when, like I said, in past Divorce Diary episode, uh, podcast episodes where I was just an angry pot, um, I never, I never recorded anything that was false. And I especially never recorded anything that was false as I saw it. I may, maybe, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, just not sure. Maybe I left something out because since, since everything has been found out that I'm recording this podcast and all of those things, I'm just like, you know, I, I didn't lie about anything. And that's not what angered everyone that found out about the podcast. My wife was so angry because she's like, it's just like you're bashing me. And I never looked at it because I only looked at it as from a selfish perspective. Like, I'm angry. This is what I want to say. I'm pissed off. So I just said, OK, um, let me listen to you now. And geez, I, I, I didn't take you into consideration when I when I recorded this. I just I did it. I didn't I didn't think about anyone but myself. Damn, that, that was selfish. Now, that doesn't remove the fact that I felt that I needed a outlet to say the things that I didn't feel I could say. I needed a platform. I needed to be heard. I needed to, I needed to. I basically did what girls with daddy issues do. I went shaking my ass in front of strangers because I didn't feel that I had love. And because I didn't feel that anyone was listening to me, I wanted to talk to anyone that would listen. That's why I'm recording a fucking podcast. Good things came out of it because I was able to hear myself back and I was able to process things. And I would, I would argue actually that good things that did happen. My wife found out about the podcast and she was, and she ripped me a new one for it. And she ripped me a new one to further explain just how selfish a person I am. And the fact that I'm just bashing her and she wasn't fully wrong with that. I was sort of just going in because I was so angry and so hurt and I felt like such a victim and I feel like if, if you're being victimized you can do things to other people nothing that I actively thought but it's something that I thought and it just influenced me in all ways and made me an even worse version of the already fucked up version of me that I am so the thing that my wife said sorry I know this is dragging on but say it now the thing that my wife said she said every time I came back to you whether it was physically or emotionally. Every time I came back to you, I came back to you because you convinced me to. And when she said that, everything sort of fell into place for me and everything made sense. I had always had a feeling or the feeling that I, I would tell my wife kind of frequently, I said, I feel like you don't like me. I feel like you don't love me. I feel like you don't, whatever. I would just talk about, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. I feel like you don't like me. I feel like you don't love me. I feel like you don't want to be married. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like. And, but she was there, you know, she was with me. We would, we're intimate occasionally. And, but she always just was just, it just always felt like she just didn't ugh, like me. She didn't want me. She didn't want to be there or anything. And then when she told me that every time I came back, it was because you convinced me. I just said, holy shit, that makes all the sense in the world now. That's why it, I thought she was with me because she wanted to be with me. I thought she was with me because she enjoyed some measure of what we were doing. I, I thought she was, I thought her being with me was a voluntary choice she was making. And there was something else that I was missing, things that I needed to work on, which, which there still were things I was missing and things I needed to work on because that's just the nature of a relationship. You're always going to need to be um, trying 
Trying could be fixing something about yourself. Trying could be packaging the way you deliver messages to your to your significant other in a better way. Um, trying could be lots and lots and lots of things that involve you doing a little bit less of the things that you do that aren't so great and doing a little more of the things that you do that are pretty good that you do, or the things realizing some of the things that you do that make your significant other like fall in love with you all over again they're over the moon they're having the best day ever and you look at that as just a freaking nothing burger like i mean there was something that i did like my wife just she she says you know i just really would like it if you touched me your affection toward me is really something that i like I didn't think at all she liked when I touched her, especially because I would, me and my dumb man brain, I'm matching touching with intimacy, intimacy with sex. So because I felt like we weren't going to get to that final destination that I wanted to be at with her sexually, I just wouldn't do maybe level one and level two. But then when we had a nice sit down and discussion about it and she really was able to articulate herself, not in any sort of angry way. She just kind of, uh, you know, I just need you to know, like, I've been trying to tell you for years that I really like it when you touch me and it your affection through touch is what I really like. And I remember being the asshole version of me and just, you know, being super defensive and. I ain't gonna touch you. What am I gonna touch you for? It's not gonna lead to any, what, what are you doing? Well, that's just gonna make me feel. I went into a me feel. It's gonna make me feel, me feel. I just went into a super selfish mode behind the disguise like I'm doing her a favor. Since you don't wanna, since you don't wanna be intimate, why would I touch you to get us to that place that you don't want to go. I was just selfish, man. That's, that's all I can say. I was just fucking selfish. And done. That That's not a good way to be. I was just fucking selfish. So her saying what she said to me, you convinced me to come back. It's I kind of put in that little bucket in my brain. I said, Oh, so you, you don't want to be with me. I convinced you, you don't want this. So you don't want this. You don't want me. That's how I look at it. And I don't know that that's right because I, I tend to inflate things a little bit. I tend to do the chicken little thing. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. And I don't know how else to say it. It's just, that is a flaw of mine. And we're going to talk a little bit later tonight. And I'm going to ask her, you know, here's what I took away from what you said. And I took away that you don't, you don't like me. You don't, you're not here because you want to be. You're here because I convinced you to be. So you don't want me, right? Like, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I guess I have some validation issues. I have some weaknesses in myself that make me a little bit soft and are making me question my value to other people. And I want my wife to reassure me that she loves me. And that is a very weak way that I am. And that's a very weak way to be. I'm not coming from a position of strength. I'm not coming from a position of abundance and that I'm not even celebrating the fact that I'm married and I have someone that, you know, for the most part is not trying to hurt me. And when they do hurt me, maybe they hurt me because they were hurting themselves. And I take everything personally uh, not everything, but the things that I do take personally, they're like, I take them super, super, super personally. So it's just kind of a, it's a crazy thing to come to the realizations of who and what you really are. And I know that I'm a good guy and I'm, 
but I didn't realize just how sensitive I was. I didn't realize how soft I was. I didn't realize any of that. And now I do. And I'm working on it. And I got to say, that's not on my wife. It's not on my wife to deal with a man that is emotionally as weak as I still am. But the good part is, I know that now. I'm not moving through life in that, oh my gosh, woe is me. My wife won't just, how come she can't? What what if she just does more of, what the, what the, what the? Nope. That's not me because that's not how I view the world anymore. I view the world like I need to get my shit together. Stop blaming people for other things. Yeah, you got hurt. That's okay. I mean, well, maybe it's not okay, but it needs to be. You got hurt. It need, you got to get over it at some point. You can't continue to rake people over the coals for how they hurt you. If you're going to stay married, you're going to try to keep your family together. You only have control over yourself. So please miss me with that victim bullshit. And that's what I'm trying to do now. Stop all my victim bullshit. Wow. That was the Divorce Diaries podcast. The Daily Saga will continue tomorrow. The full season's episodes are on Patreon now. Subscribe for early access. Click the Patreon link in the description. Hopefully these entries help our anonymous recorder as a form of his own personal therapy. That's his hope and his intention. Will these recordings of life's curveballs lead this family to the best resolution in the end? We'll keep listening. New episodes are released daily on all podcast players, but all episodes are available on Patreon at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Until next time.